conceptual perspective. People talk Real about talk, it. Like throwing shots. All of the elements. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to 2021. I, I wish you nothing but the best this year has to offer. I wish you nothing but prosperity, health, and well-being. I pray, I pray that this year you do something that you've never done or experienced before, that you go out and get it done. I'm sitting outside. Uh, you, have to, you guys have to bear with me. I'm sitting outside in my daughter's um, school. I'm about to withdraw her out of school and put her in a new school. So whenever I shoot these videos, I'm going to like be in transit somewhere because I'm constantly moving and shaking. I have to be. I have, you know, <laughs> responsibilities, so I got to be out here and doing my thing. But this morning, I'm, I'm here because I was requested to give you guys more content, more videos. I had someone come on my last video that said that, you know, they really appreciated it and they really would like more videos and content. So I'm trying, you guys. I'm trying to do this balancing act of you know, doing the things that God has called me to do and to um, support, help support my family as well. So it's a little difficult sometimes in making sure my priorities are straight and getting everything done. So that's me. That's why I'm sitting outside before I go walk into the school and take her out, putting her in a new school. But I'm excited to be with you guys today. I absolutely uh, love and adore you guys, and I'm always going to be cheering you on. I think this can be a phenomenal year for us, and so I want us to make the best out of it. This message is for the ladies, and I mean, men can listen to it too because we need to kind of learn each other and understand each other, and so this can be for men as well. Um, let me see, how do I want to start? I want to start by saying, I think that too many of us, we, uh, we don't follow our discernment. God gave us a gift of discernment and that discernment, uh, it speaks loud and it speaks clear. And it's at the very beginning of any start of any romantic relationship and it, it can even be in platonic relationships but you're a, there's going to be like a little radar inside of you i'm gonna just call it a radar but it's discernment it's your spirit it's your psyche and it tells you when something's off and when as soon as you get that discernment that's when you are to walk away you don't let the person keep i'm going to talk romantically right now but the, the person that's romantically um you know intrigued by you or they're trying to pursue you or whatever you want to call it and when you initially meet that person whatever that feeling is at that very moment that's your that listen to that because that could be your discernment that's if you're in a healthy place if you're not in a healthy place then it could be something else but nine times out of ten we'll get the, a discernment it's almost like a warning from God and God will tell us if something is for you or not now, if you ignore that discernment and you move forward, then you're stepping outside of God's protection and it's covering over your life. We got to be really, really careful. I was, um, last night as I was going upstairs to unwind, because sometimes I like to calm down. I have so much stuff on my mind and everything. So I come upstairs and I, I do my personal hygiene, whatever I have to do. And then I uh, cut my TV on and I just kind of look at it to kind of bring me down and get my mind off of other stuff. But for whatever reason, my, my uh, TV wasn't working last night and I didn't feel like rebooting it and all that because it's one of those smart TVs. So I just um, opened up my, my uh, iPad and start scrolling. I don't do a lot of YouTube because it's a lot of filth on there. but. I started scrolling YouTube. Initially, I was looking at like weight loss, weight weight lifting goals, and all of those things because I'm always trying to find a way to better myself physically, spiritually, mentally. So I'm always wanting to pour in stuff that's going to feed me. Um, so I saw a couple of those things. Then I came across this one young lady. She was 19 years old, and I'm saying this to young women. This message is for young women and women. It doesn't matter. Uh, but this young woman, beautiful black queen, princess, because she's young, 
she's 19 years old and she was telling her story about how her husband gave her HIV. He was on the DL. But what I wanted to bring her up as an example because initially she said she didn't like him at first. Initially she said it was something about him. She didn't really know what it was, but she didn't like him. That was her discernment telling her he's not for you stay away no but she moved forward anyway and then she ended up contracting hiv from this man first of all he was 34 years old she was 19 it's already out of whack that's why i'm like i don't know why and i think some young women and i love you sisters because i have young daughters too but some young women think it's um it's a good thing when older men are attracted to them. No, ma'am, it's not a good thing. It's something about them, and I'm not speaking overall because some men are different, but some men know that they can get over on somebody young and naive before they can get over on somebody that's older and more mature because we can see game before it's coming, you know, if you're mature and you've been through some stuff. But when you're young and you're naive, some young women say, oh, girl, I like older men. They like me. And then you're just thinking, oh, they may come in and take care of you. No, sister, there's something about him. The reason why he can't go deal with somebody his age, because there's there's something he's trying to hide. There's a flaw that he has that he think he can slide on by you because you're naive and you're just going to listen to every word that comes out of his mouth. So it's not a compliment. Always ask yourself, why me? Other than the fact that I'm young, but why isn't he dealing with women that are his age? Why somebody as young as I? That's a big red flag. And I'm saying this to young girls, young women all over the world. That's the biggest red flag. If you're 19 years old, you just out of high school, and a 34, uh, 35 and up year old man wants to date you. That's a huge red flag. I would check everything out if I was you. If you still decided you wanted to be with somebody older background check everything well this young beautiful black queen after he kept pursuing her she gave in like most women i hear those stories all the time i'm like there is no way i would marry a man that i didn't like for one and he had to pursue me for two or more years and i still didn't really like him but everybody was telling me oh i should try no that was my discernment telling me he was not the one for me i had so many People say, well, he just wore me down. And I'm saying, dang, that wasn't even your choice. You know, that's something that you were talked into. You know, what if you would have waited on somebody? I don't know. I just don't understand those type situations. But at any rate, she allowed him to pursue him. Actually, her dad, she calls him, um, what did she call him? A sperm donor because he really wasn't a father to her. So her dad was in prison. So I'm assuming he was in prison with this guy that was in prison. So who knows what they were doing, but he was in prison. So he knew the guy that was just had just did a prison stint. And he introduces this man to his 19 year old precious baby. Where are our men? Where are our protectors? Where are they? Where are providers, our protectors? Where are our priests? We're supposed to be covered Black women are not covered. I'm sorry, we're not. And when I seen this, it broke my heart. And all I could do was think about my girls and how women, single women, single parents, I'm thinking about the single sisters now that have children, how we have to be so many, we have to put on so many different hats and we try to cover everything. But there's one thing, sisters, we cannot cover. We cannot we cannot give our give of ourselves like we can't give masculine energy to our our daughters because we we're, we're feminine energy and they're feminine energy they need that masculine energy that's going to be positive that's going to be covering protective to help rear these children so that then somebody that would have raised this little girl that was co that covered her protected her loved her provided for her should have been more covered there's no way in the world he would have introduced an ex-convict to his 19 year old princess there's just no way i mean there's no way so 
I don't want to take too long with this video, but I'm trying to make a point here. There is something called discernment. That's something she had and she bypassed. But how many of us older, you know, more mature women, and I'm not saying how old, because we don't tell our age, but <laughs> how many of us, you know, have pa out, passed over that discernment? How many? And I know we have to do our work. And I know that if we've ever experienced trauma or somebody cheating on us or somebody, you know, going through an abusive relationship, I know that they, that may taint our vision a little bit and it may make us hyper vigilant on not trusting other people. So some of us may have trust issues going into new relationships, but that's something that we need to deal with first uh, before we even consider being with someone because that's going to be a problem too but then sometimes it's not just the fact that you have trust issues sometimes it's called discernment and i'm thinking back in my past when there was times where, where god gave me discernment and i bypassed it and every time i did i i feel flat on my face i feel because god told me no and I kept going. So how many times, ladies, have God told you no? Have God given you discernment and you just, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we didn't listen. And we regretted it. We lived to regret it. So my thing is, as soon as you get that little ding, 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 you need to move on. Just, just keep going. I don't care what season you think you're in. Is somebody better? listen to your discernment ladies it could save it could literally save your life stay away from emotional men men that that don't know how to control their emotions and i'm not saying when i mean control emotions because i want our people to understand that it's okay for men to cry because they hurt and i think a lot of time we, we suffocate our boys and we tell them to man up and when we tell them to man up they don't ever really effectively deal with their emotions so they keep it all bottled in that's what creates emotional men it's okay for them to hurt and cry and we console them and say okay yeah baby i know um you know that hurts you and you hug them and say it's okay for you to cry because crying is a healthy emotion release it forgive grieve and move forward that's what we need to be teaching our young boys growing up into manhood that it's okay for them to have healthy emotions. It's okay. Don't bottle that stuff up inside because if they grow up their whole childhood all the way to a grow, uh, adulthood as a male and they never they're never able to freely express their emotions, they become emotional men and they go out and they abuse women or worse, they kill women. Stay away from emotional men. And you're going to know them by how they deal with conflict. yeah yeah you're gonna know them and so just be real careful with that with them you don't want to be in a relationship with an emotional man it's not flattering that you know he wants to control your every move it's not flattering that um yeah some girls like oh that's so cute he is jealous jealousy is not attractive ladies insecurity is not attractive jealousy is not attractive controlling behavior is not attractive those are warning signs those are traits of men that are unstable it's nothing flattering about that run um so i said all of that to say discernment is key we have to be so in touch with our spiritual self and our source which is god that you're going to always ask god for clarity you're going to always um release any negative energy that could be blocking your sensors to where you can have true discernment so you always want to make sure you're in a healthy way you don't want to hold on to grievances or unforgiveness because this will block your just your healthy discernment it'll block it so you always want to make sure you're ridding yourself and we are going to get negative feelings and negative emotions and we that's one thing i think as a people we have to learn that it's okay one day you feel you don't feel good you, you may even be depressed that one day but you'd be like 
the next day it could change well you have to purge those negative emotions okay lord i didn't feel good all day father god whatever this is hindering me whatever this energy is remove it from me so that i can be free and my 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 body and my spirit can be clear so i can hear from you clearly and so we have to constantly purge ne negative energy and it's okay we're gonna get it but we have to know that it's there address it and and release it and so um we have to make sure we're healthy and sometimes i know when i'm in a bad space i was like you know what i'm not making any decisions today i'm not talking to anybody that's really excuse me that's really important to me today because i am not in good in a good place so i know when i'm in those places i don't deal with anything confrontational i don't make any important decisions until i'm back to normal and women you know we go through that ladies you know uh, so it's very important to learn how to control our emotions and I'm speaking to women and men But ladies if you're raising if you're rearing a son and the father's not involved. I pray that he, he gets involved But if he isn't it's okay for him to cry. It's okay to to nurture that part of him We don't want our men too soft now. So there's gonna be some times we're gonna be like, okay, man up No, I don't need you crying every five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to do some push-ups or something and I'm trying to make a joke out of it, but it's okay for them if they really are hurt. They broke up with their first girlfriend. It's okay for him to come to you and cry and you hold him and you say, it's okay. It's going to be okay. That just meant it's somebody better for you. But we just have to cultivate those healthy emotions in general, women and men, young women and young boys. We have to teach ourselves because, you know, we've always been trained that there's been so much trauma handed down to us from our ancestors and then slave masters to our ancestors that we're just prone to be okay with abuse and mistreatment and i'm saying enough is enough no more of that no more of that toxic behavior you know we have to learn healthy boundaries too and that's something that if you haven't been taught you have to learn it i had to go teach myself healthy boundaries because my family had none and then all I was told as a little child was that regardless of what the person did to hurt me, I had to forgive them over and over and over again. Well, guess what? That teaches your child or your children unhealthy boundaries. That teaches them that they're supposed to be a doormat and everybody in the world has every right to walk all over them or wipe their mud and their dirt and their grime all over us. And then we just supposed to say, I forgive you. And that makes it all right. No, it does not make it all right. You will not continually hurt me over and over and over again. And all I'm gonna do is say, I forgive you because you're, you're destroying my soul. That's not good. So we have a right to stand up for ourselves, ladies. We have a right to want good things. It's, it's okay. I want every good thing that God has for me. And I want that for you too. I want every good thing. And I want you to have every good thing. And it's okay. Anybody telling you otherwise is not of God. We were not put here to suffer on the face of this earth. And I'm not saying we're not going to ever go through things. But the black woman's plight should not be the suffrage in a whole. When you woke up from as early as you can remember your life you were suffering from the time you lay down to to pass on to the next life nothing but suffering occurred you didn't live how god wanted you to live you lived what man said you should live and and you live their their worth over your life not your own when we have self-worth and we have self-love we know that we deserve god's best and suffering ain't it now, I know we're going to go through things, trials and tribulations, but if your whole life has been nothing but suffering, that's not of God. Don't let nobody tell you that it is. It's not. So this video is to encourage my sisters to follow your discernment. Your inner self is going to tell you if somebody is right for you or not. If you're getting something telling you check his phone he's hiding he's doing something that you don't know that's your discernment 
most of the time that's if you have healthy you know if you're healthy and you don't have unresolved trust issues that could be your discernment a lot of times i don't think i've ever met a woman <clears throat> that has said she checked her man's phone and she didn't find anything i don't think i ever heard that I think, you know, now there could be some women out there that just have so, you know, so bad, you know, they have a lot of bad trust issues and they check their man phone and every time they check it, they don't see anything, but they still think he's cheating. Now you need to go get some help or he's doing something dishonest. You need to get some counseling and work through those things. But for the women that say something told them to check the phone and they checked the phone and they found horrendous stuff because this the young girl that I'm going back to, the 19 year old, she started having doubts about him. Well, first of all, she had the discernment at the beginning telling her that he wasn't the one, but she went on and she married him and she went through all of those things with him. But she went on to say that something told her, you know, she checked his computer or his email or something and she found uh, men in his DM, naked pictures and sexual in the window, all kinds of stuff. Now that alone would have went, I would have went and ran off and got tested because I was like, okay, he's having sex with men, he's DL, he's been to prison. Oh, hell no. Uh, I'm gonna go get tested, but that didn't make her get tested. She didn't find out she was HIV positive until she almost had her baby. Because they have a kid together. That's a whole nother story. I know women that's been through that too. They found out they had HIV when they got pregnant. Um, and most of those men have been DL, down low men. Most women get HIV, and let's tell the truth. Most women get HIV because of down low men, husbands, boyfriends, whatever. If you like men, we're not stoning anybody. If that's your preference, just be that. But to be down low and you have an unprotected sex with all kind of different types of men and bring it home to your wives and you can possibly pass it to your unborn child is wrong. But at any rate, I'm going to keep moving. She went on, a, she found all that information and she still didn't leave him, y'all. She didn't leave him. I'm not judging her because many of us done done some dumb stuff too. But we find stuff and we know it was the biggest warning sign and we, and we stay there. And be like, oh, I'm stupid. No, you're not stupid. You're a woman. You want to believe in somebody. You want to have somebody to love you and cover you and protect you. But not everybody is capable of doing that. Some people are not raised off of love. They raised off, the, off of survival. So you got to make sure you allow your discernment to lead you. So that's what this video was about. When I saw it, I was like, oh my Lord, it just kind of made me really think about um, my daughters. I have, um, that's still at home with me, a uh, 18 year old. And then I have the 16 year old and I'm just like, oh my Lord, you know, they have so much more to worry about than we had back in the day. Although I knew of people that got HIV actually they got AIDS because you know I don't want to date myself but uh, back then they didn't have these new drugs that they have now that can make your viral load undetectable and untransmittable back then when people didn't go and take their meds that they would go all the way to the AIDS part of it and then they would pass on and I have you know a couple friends that's passed on from AIDS so back then we didn't have all that so I guess maybe that kind of reeled us in a little bit more because we knew AIDS was prevalent and we knew that we had to protect ourselves but now I think some of our youth have this false sense of security of, of knowing that they can or thinking they could take this drug if they catch AIDS or HIV and, and, and make it undetectable and I think it's I think it's good because it prevents a lot of people from dying that died in the past that didn't have to. But I also think it's a false sense of security and it makes us a little bit irresponsible. You know, we think we can just have all this unprotected sex with all these different souls and all these different demons because that's what they carry. When you give of yourself to any and everybody, they're carrying spirits. So then we think we can do all that and then we're still okay. No, you're not okay because not everybody responds to the HIV medicine. Not everybody can become undetectable. 
So I would always be that person that would think, well, what if I'm the person that I don't respond to the medicine and I get this horrible disease and I die from it all because I lacked self-control. So I think it's, it's given our youth a false sense of security and I absolutely hate it. I hate it. <sighs> That's a whole nother story and I'm not gonna go into that. Um, but yeah, this is really for the ladies and young ladies. And if men can get something for this from this, I hope that you do too. But discernment is the key. You know, if something's telling you it's not right, nine times out of 10, it's not right. Do not move on in that relationship. And this could go for men too, you know. You know, something's telling you that it's something not right about her. I mean, she has everything else you want. She's beautiful, she's attractive, she has a nice body. She could even be very, very educated and all of these things, but it's something in the back of you, in the back of your mind telling you, something not right about her. I don't know what it is, bro, but I can't, I can't really get it. That's your discernment. Follow that and move on until it feels right. So I'm gonna end this video. I've been on here a little long. It's like almost 27 minutes, but I appreciate you all. I love you all. This message is really for my sisters, but if men can get something out of it, then go right ahead. I just think that we need to take our time, slow down, learn how to develop healthy boundaries and um, learn how to identify toxic people and situations and things. Learn how to value yourself to the point to where you understand where you're unequally yoked with someone else. And uh, I'm not going to say that we're not going to have differences, but when it's like foundational stuff, then you know you're unequally yoked and that relationship is not going to work. So this is my challenge to you for 2021 to recognize in your life where you are your own poison. And if that means that you're always allowing people to manipulate you or you're looking past your discernment or something of that sort, then you need to recognize that and pull yourself back in and really just deal with you. Do your work until you're whole and healthy enough to be attracted to the right people or attracting the right people. So I'm going to say bye. Thank you. I appreciate you all. I love you and I wish you nothing but prosperity and the best things that 2020 can offer. I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Conceptual, uh, perspective, people talk about it, all of the elements.